the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself a prudent to god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth how many great lessons we can learn from the life of samson the one who lost the nazarite ship by easily being beguiled by the smiles and the desires of devil even today in the christendom of the church age the believers who are been called as sons of god who have been sanctified and kept apart more than the nazarite were what they would have taken and kept themselves are been easily beguiled for the desire of their own lustful pattern just by falling an easy prey to the old sin nature we learn two imprisonments the one was with joseph the man who was thoroughly ready though he was into a prison to glorify the lord's victory but this man became the slave of satan and he became a great defeat by losing the nazarite ship greater than nazarites today we are been called for ambassador ship we are been called for the royalty of the priesthood we are been called to given a greater degree of a father for lord god the father in heaven but what are we doing we learn from judges 16:21 the philistines seized samson and put out his eyes bound him with fetters of bronze and he had to grind in the prison house this was the depth of degradation to which samson's departure from god brought him this one whose name means as the sun is seen grinding for the enemies of the lord in the blindness and darkness of his lost nazarite ship that is the walk of each and every believer blindness and darkness walking in the darkness of this world when we are not walking in the light this is what the lesson we can learn even from the life principle of 1 john 3 6 and 7 he is light we need to walk in light 1 john 2 6 when we are not walking in the light then we are grinding in the prison of blindness and darkness of satan why because all sin nature controls our soul and when all sin nature controls our soul we do know what are the fruit of the flesh the fruit of the flesh is constantly evil 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 it is living a life that is satisfying to satan not to god even as such many of the people are there today though they are been sealed by the guarantee of lord god the holy spirit as a pledge given to you at the moment of salvation we are loving to live a life in darkness we are not able to expose our deeds in light and correct them and get back to the reality of the word by understanding that this world is temporary the deeds that you do in the energy of your flesh is temporary you need to have a look upon permanent things which is to be done in the light in the light of bible doctrine to live a true worth of our salvation where lord has given us this day break dear brethren we need to understand why lord has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and transported us into the kingdom of light through his redemption of cross through his redemption of his blood upon the cross we are not here to waste our time we are not here to spend our time in useless and worthless speculations we are here to learn sound bible doctrine so that we should be constantly walking in the light so that we cannot become a prey for darkness as this people they have become darkness darkened people by ignoring doctrine set efficiency for 17 do not walk as this people are walking in the darkness of their mind but rather walk in the lightness of bible doctrine set the word of the lord what a great reality of the lesson that you and i have to learn but we are still alienated we are still dark and we are still walking in darkness 
Isn't it a great pain for us to note these things? Absolutely great pain for us to note these things, that we are not walking in the truth. And when Second John writes, Apostle John, he tells, I love to cherish to tell to you that your children are walking in truth. Today, where are we walking? If we walk in the truth and light of Lord God Almighty, we will not yield to the lust patterns of the sin nature, and we will not lose our, our, our sanctification in Christ as a royal family of God member. Samson, last night, right ship. We are not here for apostles. Apostles were only 12. The 13th one being in replacement of the 12th apostle Paul. But we are now the who else? The children of God, the great royal family of God. And we have been given the sanctification process to be kept pure. There is one mention of a prison in scripture before this. Joseph was cast into the cast into it because he stood firm to his devotion to God and his determination not to sin against him. That devotion meant much suffering, but it was a path of victory in Lord's glory. Here is a woeful contrast. Joseph's prison meant victory. Samson's prison meant utter defeat. What a host of Philistines and all this strength had failed to accomplish. His own unbridled desire had bought him out. He who had delivered his brethren from the Philistines was bound by them. God's Nazareth became the devil's slave. He who carried away the gates of Gaza is led back through them as a prisoner, and the one who had made his force to quack and flee now makes laughter for them at the festival of their God. If we found if we, if, if we found encouragement in Samson's exploit, learning from them what an individual independence upon God can accomplish, we are now warned against self-confidence by seeing how low the strong man may fall by fulfilling his lust patterns of the sin nature. If we would escape such defeat, we must know wherein our strength lies, the secret of an Hakare, where our Samson asked the Lord to will to provide them the will of him that called which is dependence upon God and judgment of self. The strength of the Philistines did not overcome Samson. He was drawn away from the path of devotion to God by their seductions. It was not fear of their anger that anguished him. He was beguiled and ensnared by the smiles of Delilah. The devil's desire is to beguile all who are true to the Lord today in this dispensation of the church age, to ensnare them by that which is not of God. And this danger has been recorded greater in this apostasy period of the year of our Lord in 2015 as well to a great extension. People may think she gone and mad when we are preaching these things, but I don't care. They are really in a greater danger by ignoring doctrine, by ignoring their royalty, by ignoring their sanctification, by ignoring their ambassadorship. People are really wrong, and they are being gone wild, greater into desires of their lustful patterns by ignoring the true pastor teacher gift, as Jeremiah posed upon to tell about the false pastors in Jeremiah 23. You hear or for where I don't care, it is for your wealth. It is for your purpose that you need to give number one priority for doctrine. As you go, so goes the nation of law. As you take number one priority, so will be the Bible doctrine for your soul, so will be the breath to your body. Number one priority, when you take breath to survive on this earth, so should be Bible doctrine to be surviving in this pilgrimage of this angelic conflict. We cannot lose our sanctification. We cannot lose the sanctification of Lord as Moses did among the people. Just when he said to spoke, he went and ate twice. And our Lord said, you did not sanctify me there. That should not be a remark and record upon us at the judgment seat of Christ when we sit, when we stand at the beam of throne. You take it, believe it or not, I don't care. But this is a fact. One man was into prison because of his great devotion, because of his firm devotion to God and the determination not to sin against my Lord God Almighty. The other man was readily willing now, but he was into the prison for utter defeat. So what do you learn from this? Sanctify the Lord God of hosts. He alone is our fear. He alone is our dread. He alone is our terror. And we need to sanctify him above all other things. Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Life is very short. Think over these issues. We shall continue in the next day.
Father, I'm grateful for the privilege that thou hast given the pledge and assurance of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to stand firm against all the snares of devil. Help us to strengthen more and more so that we could live a life, a life that is maximum glorifying unto thee, to the praise of your glory and your grace, because you have found, chosen and founded us before the foundation of the world, to the praise of your glory. Help us to establish that things rather than involving ourselves into the utter darkness of this world, which is blindness and darkness all the time. Help us to know thy truth, thy truth, and thy truth alone, because the entrance of the word give us light, and we need to walk in the light. When we walk in the light, we can do, we can undo the works of the evil and show forth thy glory in this midst. Help us to do by holding forth thy word of Lord, and help us to really glorify thee. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.